Now, our first audio drama we covered with Sylvester McCoy um, basically showed what would happen if you took the two, the, the, the Doctor and the companion from season 24, which is one of the worst seasons, and put them in a good story. You, you, you could see what, what, the, what the potential was. The fact that when written well, there were good characters there. Basically, the fact is, if they allowed McCoy to be what he would later become in seasons 25 and 26 from the start, I think the season would have maybe gotten better. Maybe. I don't know. We can't tell. But, but by, and, okay, by and large, many people hated season 24, but loved 25 and 26. And eh, practically equal measure. And, you know, that kind of would also carry on to the new adventure stuff. The Seventh Doctor has always been a very... I love the Seventh Doctor. Like, he's dangerously close to becoming my Doctor. Sorry, David Tennant. I don't know why, but I just seem to gravitate towards him. I think it's because he's a very impossible to read character who, in the end, is trying to manipulate things to a better end and not simply letting the terrors take up. So I figured the next and probably final big finish we'll do with him for this whole week is his very first solo release, The Fearmonger. The Fearmonger I was very interested in seeing because it was Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Aldred together again. And I love them. They're my, f they're definitely one of my favorite Doctor Companion pairings. Got a well, insanely well. Um, somehow, though Sophie Aldred wasn't a great actress by any stretch, somehow managed. Um, you could tell she got along with Sylvester, and that meant the chemistry worked. In it was very believable. Now, one thing about this is um, how it feels very much like a, a natural kind of story to follow up after you've seen um, s basically um, most... I've seen most of uh, 25 and... Tw actually, no, I have, I've only seen one story in 25, but I've seen most of, of 26. And if you understand the kind of uh, length it was going at the time... Uh, it was basically uh, the doctor's mission to kind of help Ace fix Ace, um, help her deal with her past, and you know become a better person through that. Grow basically grow up from her her inner struggles and become something else. That's why I kind of like survival. Survival was kind of a nice little ending to it, and now we can see what this is like. Basically, see the new and improved Ace, and. The um, Jonathan Blum, who did this, uh, got it down real, real well. Uh, because Ace has to do um, f now. The thing about the fearmonger is it plays on the idea of what fear does to people. Um, basically, what when someone's afraid will force them to do. A uh, big part of the story is a man who's afraid, who's desperately afraid of this of his politician what lengths he'll do to try and actually kill her because basic he's thanks to a strange entity is forced to believe um, okay the the man in question believes that there's a strange monster possessing this politician and because you can feel it and it's feeding off of fear and, cre and basically wants to destroy the monster he's desperately afraid of the monster and like I keep saying Fear is forcing him to do something that, under calm circumstances, you would never consider. But he he's at his wit's end because of it. And this is interesting. Basically, you have a very interesting concept. The Doctor going against fear. It's, like I said with survival, I really find it interesting when you face the Doctor who very much is a character who thinks his way out of things, trying to defeat basically human nature or the nature of, of the living. He very much 
tries to think out of things. And sometimes emotions in nature don't abide by the law, by his laws, by thinking. They simply go and are a natural force and can't be settled with that. He's kind of taught Ace to think the way he thinks in terms of trying to talk them down, use words. But the thing is, this this basically this proves that sometimes it's uh, tough to stop something. You can manipulate emotion. That's that's the thing. The doctor's very much focused on it. It kind of shines a light on this politician because this politician does manipulate people's fears and able to get her way and to scare up voters. Yeah, again, it's kind of an easy way out when you talk about fear, but still done very well, because the character herself is very well written. Uh, written as a very average person who's running for these things. And towards the end, when, you know, basically all the, the worst events have happened, is scared out of her mind over what the hell happened, and isn't sure if she wants to continue this path. That's the thing. It it, it It's almost like you ever actually know what's controlling what? Is someone manipulating you, or are you simply allowing your own fear to manipulate yourself in throwing things? It, it It's very interesting um, how the monster works, how the Doctor is, again, thrown as what's in. That's the thing I like. I like the fact that the Doctor, at one point, admits, not defeat, but sits there, beats, and basically takes a breather. And this is after, this is a spoiler, Ace does get shot by uh, by someone. And especially after Ace tried to, you know, use the peaceful method, think her way out of it, talk them down, and still got shot. It That's the thing I, I kind of liked. The fact that, and it's a strategy that worked all the way up to this point in the story where she tried to use her head and trick them and make them feel comfortable and basically, again, manipulate with emotion but underestimating how powerful the fear in someone is that will make them do something, make them something that they do incredibly forget. Again, think without any real rationale. And the narrative of this whole thing um, is very meticulous. There's a very, very, um, what's the word? I'm going to go with a very dark tone at times. It it kind of basically shows um, how politics, people will use politics to manipulate, not just politics, but media. There's this uh, whole big thing about this radio host who uses fear as well, tells you the negatives, and manipulates to think who you're thinking. And it's very interesting when that same radio host backtracks and says, oh, I'm only being an entertainer, but the thing is, he's being an entertainer who's trying to scare someone. He doesn't fully realize the impact, and that's kind of the thing I like, is... sometimes they don't fully realize they're doing something in ainly dangerous. They simply think they're of how this is going to help them in the end. And also the end, the final scene uh, the final scene is very, very emotionally heartbreaking to the point where you just f crash with the main characters. It's between the main characters. I'm not going to explain how, but the build up to it and kind of how how it's in a weird way supporting my incredibly rambling thing about how it's again yeah, it forces you to do things that you know they wouldn't do, but just want to get that feeling out of their head. All in all, this is a f I was blown away by this. I didn't know what to expect. I was ex at least hoping that it was going to be a very good continuation of the Ace's character development, it is. It's a good story on... In, in terms of leads, again, 
both are amazing. McCoy is playing it somber, but basically trying his best to uh, put things right, get things calm, dissolve the fear both physically with the creature that's causing this, and basically with everyone, because the thing is everyone eventually is filling themselves with fear over this, losing their minds and you don't know anymore. Sophie Aldred's great in this as well, playing it very much like her, to the point where towards around episode three, because that's the thing, this story in a weird way ends at episode three, but keeps going for four, wraps up the supporting cast stuff, but builds to an ending for for the main cast. Usually, stories don't have that. You're kind of used to them ending the threat, and if it is something that focuses on anything, it focuses on the supporting cast because, you know, they were obviously trying to build a story for them, and you want to see it end. They ended it basically the end of the story for them, wrapped up a couple loose ends, but subtly building to this personal end for the main leads that was, again, well done. I really... I'm really sad that this writer hasn't done anything else for Big Finish. I understand that he has done some novels. Um, he's In the past, he's done novels, but I think he, since then, has done some novels. I hope so. I really... I really do think this is one of the greats that again shows that McCoy's amazing when you give him just flat out amazing stuff.